Hi, in this video, we'll look at conducting a t-test in Excel. So in my example Excel data set, I have five variables. My first variable code is just a participant number. So you see that each row has a different number. So each row represents a different participant. And in total, we have 103 participants. And then I have four variables of data. So I have a uh, number of minutes spent revising, exam performance, an anxiety score, and gender. If we look at our gender variable, you see that we have ones and twos, so representing males and females. And this is typically how you would encounter data, uh, how it would be presented in a data set. And so for the purposes of Excel, what I actually need to do is to find a way to reorganize my data so that I can better distinguish between males versus females. And so what I'm going to do is highlight all of my rows of data. And I'm going to uh, click over here and I am going to sort but I'm going to do a custom sort, and I'm going to sort by my variable of gender, and I'm going to tell it from smallest to largest. I'm going to click OK. And so what that does is, if you notice, is reorganize my data so the participant numbers aren't going in ascending order anymore. Uh, but what we have is we have grouped together all of my ones, uh, so all of our males versus all of our females of two grouped together. And so that'll make it just a little bit easier for us to conduct our t-test. There are two different ways that you can conduct a t-test. So you can use formulas or you can use the data analysis tool pack that's an add-on for Excel that we talked about before. What we'll do is use the data analysis tool pack add-on because that's a little bit easier uh, to use and an easier way of conducting your t-test. So we'll click on data. We'll click up here on data analysis. You see our options. We've used descriptive statistics before, but this time we want to conduct a t-test and we want to use one of our two sample options because we have two different groups. We have males versus females. So we want to use a two sample t-test. And I'm going to go ahead and assume unequal variances since we're not sure if the variances between males and females on our dependent variable uh, are similar or the same. So I'm going to click OK. And then it's asking for our data. So it's asking for the data for our dependent variable. So I want to compare males and females uh, on a particular variable. So let's say anxiety. So maybe I predict that males will have a higher anxiety score compared to females, or maybe females will have a higher anxiety score compared to males. And so what I'm going to do is select my data for the anxiety scores of my males. So I'm going to stop right here because that's the end of my ones. And then I'm going to select the data for my females. And so I'm going to start there and go all the way to the end. So I just get the two, so I just get my females. And I'm going to leave this blank I don't have labels in this particular instance. So I'm going to have to just remember that variable one is males and variable two is females. We're testing at an alpha level of 0 0.05 like we've done in class. And we're having the output uh, placed in a new worksheet. And so I'm going to click OK. And you'll see in our results, in our output, that we have a number of pieces of information. The first thing that's done, this has given us the mean 
anxiety score for variable one or for males and the mean anxiety score for females. If you look, just kind of eyeballing it, they look almost the same. Uh, it's also giving us our variance. A lot of times when we report this, we want to report according to APA format or APA style, we want to report the standard deviation rather than the variance. And so you could go back and get your standard deviation. Another thing that you could do is just type in a formula to take the square root of the variance. And so that would give us our standard deviation. And so I could also get the square root for the variance for anxiety scores of females. We see that variance uh, is a little bit different and our standard deviation is a little bit different. This tells us the number of males versus the number of females. So we had 52 males and 51 females. This is telling us what the hypothesized mean difference was. And this is according to the null hypothesis. <laughs> so again, like we've talked about with statistics, we're testing the null. The null is that there is zero difference in anxiety scores between males and females. It gives us our degrees of freedom. So we have uh, 100 degrees of freedom and it's giving us our T statistic and we get our critical value, but we're getting the exact probability value here. So our T statistic is really low. So our T calculated value is 0 0.02. And our probability, our P value, we always want to use a two-tailed test. So our probability value is 0.98. And so when we're testing to determine whether our results are statistically significant, what you did when you were calculating it by hand was to compute your T statistic and compare it to the T critical value. And so it's actually giving you that table value, that T critical value that you looked up in the table. And it's 1.98. And we said that if the calculated value is smaller than the critical value, then we retain our null hypothesis. We don't support our research hypothesis. And so we're seeing that with an error, um, there's no difference in anxiety scores between males and females. When we look at this exact probability value that's calculated in Excel, we see that it's 0.98. And so that's the p-value that we would report according to APA style. So we would say p equals 0.98. And what we're looking for is a p-value of 0.05 or lower. So 0.05 or less than 0.05 for us to say that our result is statistically significant. If we wanted to reject our null hypothesis, this value here would need to be 0.05 or lower. Since it's higher than 0.05, again, we're saying that we are going to retain the null hypothesis. And so let's look at how we would report this in APA format. So our APA report would look something like this. We have 103 participants who took part in the study. There were a total of 52 males and 51 females. I discussed each of the variables in the study. So exam scores, time spent revising, and anxiety were assessed. Uh, for this purpose, I'm just focusing on anxiety. So I report the overall mean of anxiety across genders. So you can get that using the average formula or the descriptive function in the data analysis tool pack that we talked about in the previous video. So anxiety had an overall mean of 74.34 and I have my standard deviation 
in parentheses, I have italicized the SD for standard deviation. Then I state our hypothesis. So we predicted that males would report significantly higher anxiety compared to females. Here I actually report our null hypothesis. So I state our null hypothesis is that there is no difference in anxiety scores between males and females. I state which analysis we conducted. So I say we conducted an independent samples t-test to compare the anxiety scores of males and females in our sample. There was no significant difference between males. So I clearly state whether there was a significant difference or not. So I say there is no significant difference between males and I report the mean for males on anxiety and the standard deviation, italicizing the M for mean and the standard deviation um, here, the SD. And females, and I report the mean for females separately and the standard deviation for females that I got from our results output for that t-test through the data analysis tool pack. Um, say that there's no difference between males and females in anxiety. And then I report my t-test. So I have t italicized in parentheses. I'm reporting my degrees of freedom. So in that results output, you saw df. We said that's the degrees of freedom. I'm reporting those here in parentheses. I say equals and I report the value of my t statistic. Remember that that was really low is 0.02. And then I report my p-value of 0.981. I've italicized my p here for my p-value. We see that it's much larger than 0.05. So it corresponds here to my report that there's not a significant difference. And then I state what my decision was based on this test. And of course, our decision uh, was that our research hypothesis was not supported by these results, and so we retained our null hypothesis. So in the next video, we'll talk about how to do the same thing, only looking at uh, testing ANOVA.